Ladies and gentlemen, this is the fight the boxing world has been waiting for. People call me a legend, people call me the greatest. Who calls you the Keep greatest? For you. You call yourself the greatest. What a big shot by Lopez! Calling himself Thunderspeed World Champion is a uh, fantasy. Oh! Taylor scores the knockdown! This is a fight game. What do I have to lose? Okay, we'll see. Oh, just Taylor's got him on the right. Why you go out there with your Scottish dress? You're a piece of shit. I'm not a piece of shit. I am the And there it is, Teofimo Lopez! Yeah, you're going to feel the wrath, boy. Trust me, you're going to feel it. <laughs> oh, man. I can't wait, man. I'm going to this guy up, man. I can't wait. This is going to be fun. <laughs> Hey, Gareth, this is Karen Bhatti in Fort Lauderdale. How are you, sir? I'm very well. I've just stepped into Rotunda ABC Gym in Liverpool. Josh Taylor's here. You got the man there? I have the man, Teofimo Lopez, the takeover. He's here, he's ready. I'm really pumped to talk to these guys because there's a lot of bad blood, and these are also spectacular fighters. We've yeah. seen what they can do. We've seen what they can do in the ring. Let's rock and roll. Let's do it. Yeah, we're ready to roll. You look in great shape already, Josh. I'm always in shape. Ready for always. June the 10th, oh, Madison Square Garden. Can't come quick enough, Gareth. Can't come quick enough, mate. Okay, we're rolling. Why is the set, please? Well, let's say, first of all, it's great to have the two teams here. What a phenomenal fight. So let me, let me just start it off, and then I'm going to ask Tio a question. So as much as there are differences between you guys, there are a lot of similarities. When you look at your record, 18 and one, 13 knockouts. He's 19 and 0, 13 knockouts. That's very similar. You're both in your prime. You've both tasted undisputed. In your mind, are there any similarities between you and Josh Taylor? No, he hasn't. There's only one undisputed champ. <laughs> oh, man. Um, no, so to answer your question, no, really, you know, I don't think there's any similarities. Uh, the only thing that I think that we have in common is that it's two undisputed champions going at it, you know, head on June 10th. So I'm looking forward to that, you know, and uh, remaking history like I did with, against Lomachenko. I'm gonna do it against Josh Taylor. Calling yeah. himself the undisputed world champion is a uh, fantasy. You know, it's one thing that he'll never have is an undisputed champion crown. He needs to stop calling himself that. Fantasy. And they must change the rules with the WBC because that's super champion. The last time I checked. It's a Mickey Mouse, it's a Mickey Mouse belt, mate. You gotta know your stuff, man. You, you should have been. You should have been. You should have been, but you won't. I shouldn't be. See, he confirmed that I am. So you know, it's just all about perception. You should have been. Of self. I said you should have been, but you won't. Fact or yeah, fact. It's all good. It's all good, man. So Tio, well, let's get your thoughts in a technical sense. I, I know you said Josh Taylor's going to have a plan A. When that fails, that's when you're going to take advantage, right? So what, what is the game plan in this fight? No, there's no plan A, plan B, no, 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 no. The way we work is just adapting. You know, all the technical parts of Taylor, you know, he has the accolades. You got to respect that. Very true. Very true. And that's why I've been working hard and busting my butt. I like to go after these challenges. Look, all these other fighters out there right now, they're not facing no one like Taylor. They're fighting uh, come-ups. They're fighting things that to build their records. I'm someone that's old school, you know? Blood, sweat, and tears. Sugar Ray Robinson. That's really what it comes to. What mistakes do you see in Josh Taylor when you watch him fight? There's a lot. There's a lot of mistakes. I mean, hey, all the fighters he has faced, a lot of them are just um, very easy to manipulate on and, and adapt to. So there's a style that he knows, that he works on, that he does, um, that has worked for him for a long time. And even if they was to change it right now, it's too late because when you go in the ring, he's going to go right back to that, that main base. Josh, now obviously you're southpaw naturally. Tio's an orthodox stance fighter. Do you think that will play into the fight plan? I don't think so. I just think that there's two styles that we've got. It's going to be the makings of an absolute barnstormer of a fight. All fireworks. And um, unfortunately, I've got the bigger guns and it does everything the same. Still makes the same mistakes it does when he was an amateur. Very amateurish style. Yes, I give him credit, he beat Lomachenko. But in my opinion, Lomachenko's a featherweight with one arm. I'm a fully fledged light welterweight, and when he comes up against me, he comes unstuck and goes out on his back on a stretcher. A stretcher. So let me let me ask you this: We're talking about similarities, and and you mentioned southpaw Tio in your last fight. You took on a southpaw in Sandor Martin. Yep. Oh, Martin. 
Martin. That is being scored a knockdown. Very limited work by Martin, but he scores the knockdown with the southpaw right hook. Both Teofimo and Josh Taylor didn't necessarily have their best performances in their last fight. Josh Taylor against Jack Catterall. Josh, you were knocked down, but you did get the split decision victory. And still undisputed super lightweight champion of the world. Tio, in your last fight, you were technically knocked down. You got the split decision victory. Now, there was a mic moment after the fight, and a camera was on you, and we heard you say, do I still got it? Bro, do I still have it? Do, man. Do I still got it? So what did you mean when you said, do I still got it? Well, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm someone that's media trained. You know, there's red cameras when you see it, right? The red light and stuff. I know everybody's just watching me, so it's always more to talk about. It, it got boring to the point where, you know, after Ooh. I beat Lomachenko, everyone is just like, uh, you know, no one wanted to face me. You know, so I got to spice it up a little bit, you know? Yeah, so do I still got it? F yeah. You know, so I, it's all about just on June 10th, man. I'm really focused on the fight. We've been calling Josh Taylor for some time. That's who I am. I go after the guys that are supposedly the kingpin or the best at the division, and Josh Taylor is that guy. So, you know, he beat Jack Catterall no matter what. His hand was raised, not Catterall, so he's still undefeated. And in my eyes, he's still the undisputed guy at 140. That's why he carries the ring magazine. He didn't lose those belts, he just relinquished them. Something I should have done at 35, but you know, Everybody changes, everybody learns from their mistakes, and you just grow from them. It's experience. Let me, let me ask Josh a question real quick. Josh, we know you've had a great career at 140 pounds. You had this spectacular win against Ramirez, and I know after that fight, when you were preparing for Catterall, you did struggle a little bit to make weight. You did finally make the weight, but I know you've talked about eventually even moving up to 147. This fight on June 10th is at 140, so how are you doing in terms of the weight cut for this fight? I'm great. I'm well ahead of schedule. Listen, after, after that fight in uh, Vegas, I went out. I went out, enjoyed life, celebrated the win, creating history, someone that no one's ever done in the UK. The fifth fighter ever only become the undisputed world champion in history in the four belt era. I went out, I went to enjoy that. A little, did that a little bit too much. Got back into camp, took Catterall lightly, took my foot off the gas, bit of complacency crept in. We're all human, that's the mistakes that I made and that's the, the price I ended up paying for it, was end up looking terrible on the scales and putting a bad performance. When you're living, you learn, don't you? So I'll not be making these mistakes again. I've did that once in my whole career, in my whole 15 year career, and I'll not be doing that again. We know what happened in the Catterall fight. Josh, you've now changed trainers, no longer with Ben Davison. You're now with Joe McNally, who we see sitting next to you. Josh, why did you decide to make a change at trainer? Because I needed a change. The trainer wasn't the right for me. It wasn't right for me. It wasn't working for me. I need to do what I do for, for myself and do what I do best. The thing is, it's not the trainer's fault. It's yours. <laughs> it's, the tra it's not the trainer's fault. You go and switch another trainer and, and then you have to adapt. You're going to still fight the same that you've probably fought with Catterall. It doesn't change. It doesn't change. That shows weakness. That's how I see it. Whether he's your new trainer or not, it, it's just the facts, mate. Tio, let me ask you. You must have seen some clips or criticism of Josh Taylor's last fight and he hasn't been out for a year. Do you think that makes a difference? Doesn't matter, you know? I mean, it really doesn't matter what makes a difference, whether he's been out for a year or not. You know, he tells himself who he is and every day he goes there and he looks himself in the mirror probably and says, I'm this Scottish, uh, you know, giant guy and I'm gonna beat Teofimo and put him on a stretcher. Scottish Italian guy? Well, it doesn't even make sense. That's a Scottish, you know, but hey, um, really, it just comes to all those things. I can't, I can't necessarily speak upon what he's going to do until we get there in the ring. So, you know, um, everything else is just noise. You mentioned weight classes there, and Josh Taylor has campaigned at 140 for most of his career, if not all of his career. You were at lightweight, you're moving up now. This is your third fight at 140 pounds. So let's bring in Laron Turner, strength and conditioning coach of Tio. How is Tio handling this 140 pounds? Oh, he's handling it really well, man. He's putting on size, but he's cutting down at the same time. It's pretty crazy. His body can adapt to anything I give him, whether it's circuit training, whether it's running, long distances, um, weight training. He's, he's adapting to it all. It's, it's amazing seeing him work really hard every, every single day. You're getting it. Yeah. <laughs>
Josh, we know that in the lead up to this fight, you've said that Teofimo is mentally fragile. You said you're going to decapitate him, right? So, so why do you feel that way? Just what the thing just says, the things he does, he's mentally weak. He's a, he's a, mentally, he's a mouse. And he's got, already got the, the doubts in his mind. And I'm going to cement them and I'm going to put this guy into retirement after I've given him that much of a beating and a schooling. A mouse or a moose? Which one is it? A mouse. A mouse? Oh, yeah, I love that. A moose is mighty. I mate. love that moose saying, mate. You're a mouse. Thank you for the compliment. <laughs> oh, man. I can't wait, man. I'm going to this guy up, man. I can't wait. This is going to be fun. You've got asthma. <laughs> your lungs are going to be on fire. Trust me. I'm going to make you work that hard. Your heart and lungs are going to be exploding. I, what, do I got to, what do I have to lose? What do I have to lose? I'm Teofimo, against all odds. The guy that comes in there when everyone thinks that he's done. I give you guys what you want, but I'm not going to give you guys what you need until June 10th. Let's just Good. get back to the sport of boxing Good. for a moment. No, that is boxing, though. What are you talking about, mate? That is boxing. Boxing is what it was. Clown. Hey, don't shake yourself, man. This guy's a piece of Don't shake yourself. You're a piece of I'm not just a piece. I'm all of it. Yeah, you are. Piece of Big, massive bit of while you go out there with your Scottish dress and you look like, oh, let me know. Yeah, you're going to feel the <laughs> wrath, boy. Trust me. You're going to feel it. That's all rubbish, mate. You're known as the Tartan Tornado. Yeah. You're a very proud Scotsman, aren't you? Yeah. Does that play a part in your Absolutely. standing? Absolutely. That's part of my makeup. I am a very proud fighting Scotsman. And that's I'm very proud to put my country on the map. The first undisputed world champion since Ken Buchanan, who just recently passed away. So that's one thing I'm very proud of, putting my country on the map representing Scotland. And you like to walk into the bagpipes, Absolutely, don't you? absolutely. Scottish warrior, absolutely. You're, you're both phenomenal fighters. It's, it's in you. But I wanted to ask Joe, because we haven't heard from Joe yet, about the technical things that you're working on with Josh for the style of Teofimo Lopez? Yeah, well, you know, Gareth, it's a, a route to for a long time, representing Honduras in the Olympics and a few fights before that. And, you know, we caught me eye back then. You know, we still see the professional now as the kid he was back then, doing the same things. He's developed, he's come on, he's won a lot. And, you know, we've, we've utilised a lot of stuff we can capitalise on and, Likewise, be careful also because he's a dangerous fighter and the respect to be shown in the gym. Josh is shown and respect and he's in fantastic condition, as you can see, and, you know, he'll be ready coming in the tenth of June. Is it going to be a very technical fight early on? It's going to be any fight what Josh wants to play. Josh wants to fight in a pocket if he wants to box. He's not the undisputed champion for nothing. And, Look, T.O. will be dancing to Josh Taylor's tune on the 10th and truly believe that. It's going to be a great fight. This is a hell of a fight, and this is the fight of the century, not that Garcia and Davis fight. This is the true, true kingpin of it all. It's the 100th year of the Ring magazine, the Rocky belt. Can't wait. F yeah. I'm excited. He's right. It's a big fight. It's a big fight. It's a great fight. It's a huge fight, and it's one that's... Huge both sides of the pond, here and over there. So it's got the people talking. So it's a big fight, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, I was going to say, is, is this a must-win fight for you, Josh, in lots of ways? Is, is it a must-win <clears throat> fight for him? Every fight's a must-win fight. Every fight's a must-win fight. If, this, if I, this fight goes wrong, or I get the wrong decision, then it's back to the drawing board for me. And my plans that I've got to become two-weight world champion go way back. So. Yes, every fight, every fight is a must-win fight. I've got plans and ambitions that I want to do. I'm become a two-weight world champion. Hell, two-weight two undisputed world champion, something that nobody's in the sports ever done. That's the kind of goals that I've got. So every fight is a must-win fight. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the new lightweight champion of the world, George K. Theo, can I ask you, Josh hasn't lost yet. How is a boxer affected after that loss? What do you have to go through to come back? 
See, that's the thing. That's probably why he calls me a mouse, because I, I don't believe I lost that fight neither, man. The referee raised my hand before they called it for Cambosis. I know how it works. I know the <laughs> ones and twos. To me, it's not really a loss. It's just lessons. You learn how to, how to maneuver after that. See, he doesn't know what defeat tastes like yet. I've lost 21 times in my whole career, and I'm still going. And people call me a legend. People call me the greatest. And it's because of those reasons. We never stop. Who calls you the Keep greatest? For you. You call yourself the greatest. I'm the double greatest, not the greatest. The greatest is Muhammad Ali, but I'm the double greatest. <laughs> okay. All right. Look, technically with Taylor, you know, good fundamentals. He tries to keep his distance, catches his range. You know, he baits. There's a lot of things, man. I could really execute on those things that I understand from my own experience. And this is what it is. If you say you're the greatest, you got to prove it, right? So fight the best guys in the game. And that's what I'm doing. We've asked for Josh Taylor for a long time, and we've worked our way. It's not something that we were asking as let it be given. You know, Josh Taylor is the best guy that everyone wants. I'm here, stepping on there with only three fights. This is my third fight, technically at 140. A lot of you guys don't even know your research about Teofimo, that I fought at 40 before. You guys don't know about Teofimo, and I'm thankful for it because it's perfect. It's really perfect. This is technically my fourth fight at 140. Teo, Teo, are you, are you showing respect for Josh there by the things you're saying about him? I'm just speaking on his accolades. I'm not showing respect on that part. I'm just speaking the facts. Facts is not respect. The hell, why do I gotta respect this what is there to respect? Well, he was the undisputed champion. He won the Super And I was the undisputed series. champion at 135, and y'all took that away from me. Who gives a fly? Y'all scared of Teofimo at 25. I'm young. I haven't even hit my prime yet. I'm just getting warmed up. You ain't going to have a prime after this fight. Oh, yeah, you know what? You're right. They're going to call me a greatest and the youngest active Hall of Famer at 25. That's, that's more than prime. You'll be retired. That's more than prime. I'm going to put you into retirement, early retirement. You're at, the end of your, you're at the end of your road, and your trainer knows it, but he's got to motivate you mentally to get there. That's all. Carry the man. Carry that dead weight. I don't need, I did no, I don't need no mental motivation. Trust me. Just carry that dead weight, you fat Carry it. I've got a mental fortitude. Carry it, man. I'm a mental fort. You're a mouse. Thank you. I'm unbreakable Thank mentally. You. I'm unbreakable mentally. I'm already warming up. That's the one that's gonna make us win. All right. How important is your father in your corner? Oh, my father's everything, man. The dynamic duo, you know? Um, I like to keep him reserved right now, you know? For, for, for my own reasons. This is not a backup guy here next to me. This is a team sport. So that's really what it is. Um, my father is everything. A lot of people want to bring other trainers involved. I've had assistant coaches, but they don't know about boxing to the point that my father does. And that's why it's just me and him going into this fight. Don't want nobody, don't need nobody coming in that. My father's a very, very intelligent man in the game. Very. I mean, I know my in boxing, and he still surprises me daily. Daily. Josh, we, we know that you've had success when you've come over to America in the past. Do you feel like coming to New York? Is this enemy territory? No, nah, boxing ring's a boxing ring. I'm excited for coming to New York. It's the mecca of boxing, Madison Square Garden. I'm fighting in the arena where 99% of boxers who turn professional and dream of becoming world champion want to fight in New York City and Madison Square Garden. I'm one of the very few that's doing it. So, no, nah, it's not enemy territory. This is a dream come true, fighting in a venue like this. Tio, you're proudly representing Brooklyn, New York. On June 10th, what do you think it's going to be like in Madison Square Garden? What are, what are the fans going to be like? Oh, man, it's a, it's a whole, always, every time you fight at the Mecca, it's just a different um, energy. And that's what gets me going, you know? That's, that's really what it is. So when, when it comes to the Mecca, you just got to be there to actually feel the experience. That's where legends are born, you know? And that night, I'm just going to have fun. That's what I missed, you know? I wasn't having fun. The, the Martin fight, I was taking it too serious. You know what I'm saying? We just gotta have fun. You weren't having fun in, in recent fights. You're having fun again now. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, I'm not, I'm not in Vegas. I'm not doing camp in any of those sorts. Sucking me dry, you know? I gotta live a little bit. You know, I'm young, I'm 25, I'm having fun. And, and that's what was the takeover, you know? Back to back, 2017, 2018, prospect of the years, 2019. We won the world championship in Mecca. Anything is possible! So it's just all those things. 
In terms of official predictions, Josh, I know you've said you're going to knock him out in round six through eight. You're going to retire this man. So, so let me ask you this. Why do you feel that way? Because I'm the best. And this guy's so mentally insecure. I'm going to cement all his insecurities that he's got, and he's going to be retired. Tio, when you hear Josh Taylor say he's going to knock you out in the middle rounds, he's going to retire you, what is your response? Oh, the only best response. Uh, everyone got a plan until they get punched in the face. Mike Tyson. You're not Mike Tyson. You ain't no Mike Tyson. Trust me. I don't want to be. I'm Teofimo, the one and only. The man, the myth, the legend. That's it. But i got to poke you, Josh, for a minute and just say, when you say, just call you out on this, you don't watch him. No, really not. We, we, I, I, it's I, hard I, to I, believe that. I, I f do and focus on myself. Yeah. I, watch, so I watch his fights when they're live, when they've been live. Okay. I've watched his fights. I've seen enough of him. I've seen how much mistakes he makes fundamentally. He's never changed. He's never changed. Wait, didn't never you changed. say you didn't watch none of my film? Since I saw you when you're, when you're live. I watch your fights when you're live. Like yourself, I'm a boxing fan. But didn't he say you didn't watch none of my fight live? So, when you're live, I watch your fights. I don't study this guy. Not the Martin either? I've saw enough of him. He's not, he's not in my league, and I'm going to knock him out, and that's it. Contradicting yourself there, buddy. You got a final message, Tio, for... Um... For Josh, or all of us? Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely, man. Yeah. Hey, listen, for everybody tuning in, listen, thank you guys to all my fans, to all my friends, and to all the children out there that, that, are, that are seeing this and really want to become something in the sport. You know, uh, this is what it takes. Not just a trash talk, but backing it up and putting everything up on your back and carrying it with, with uh, not pride, but with humility and um, with uh, grace. You're talking about humility and grace? Well, yeah, it's how you carry it. This guy just... Talk so much, it's unbelievable. Well, this is a fight game. You're a clown, you I'm are. outside the ring right now, mate. I'm outside the ring. There's a whole nother guy. You gotta be, like Kobe has, actually says, he says, are you the same beast, but a different animal? You're so stupid, are mate, it's unbelievable. Same. Right now, you're seeing a different animal right now. So, you know, it's just those things. I don't really need to talk to you. I'm talking to my people at the moment. And para la raza, para toda mi gente, Latino, público, Mira, Latino America, estamos aquí para pelear con este p y vamos, vamos, vamos a ganar esta pelea. It's just really what it is, man. Sí, estamos entendiendo, Teo, en español, claro. But, but in, in English again, um, can you take his fans by beating him? I think I've already got his fans, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, so for everybody, you know, I'm just, I'm grateful for this opportunity. This is what we do. This is how we do it. This is why we call ourselves a takeover. And this fight right here will solidify as in the worldwide takeover. Hey, I've heard enough of this guy. June 10th, ESPN. Get your tickets now. Hey, I've heard enough of you listening to you. Waffling on, a lot of shit. I'm off ski. See you on June 10th. This man. man's on his way out, you know, 30. 30 years, 30 something years old. You know, he's gotta leave. He's gotta leave. All good. Hey, but we stay. We're going to have to say goodbye for now. Thanks very much for your time over there. We cannot wait for June the 10th. We cannot wait for this fight. It really is set up to be absolutely spectacular.